I'm Larry Ray, President and CEO of American Manganese, Inc. Listed on the TSX Venture, ticker symbol AMY, A-M-Y, with proprietary patents in the U.S., China, and South Africa. Our focus is on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. China recently legislated the responsibility for recycling onto their electric vehicle manufacturers and importers. For more information, please visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Christopher Mullen. His website is TheGoldenOilGuy.com. Welcome to the show, Chris. Hey, thanks for having me, Jim. The U.S. dollar appears to be in trouble, is it? Yeah, you know what, We've, we're, we're, we're seeing a critical breakdown in the U.S. dollar index. It really just started to break down over the last week. Uh, we, we've had a topping phase, a potential topping phase form in the U.S. dollar index for over a year. And last week and this week, we've seen price break down. We haven't had a weekly close below the support level. We, we saw a good sell-off there a couple in the last couple of days. It's rebounding today. And it's trying to work itself up to close back above support. But if we have a close on the weekly chart below uh, roughly the uh, 9321 level, we're, we're going to see, I think, some big investment money moving out of the U.S. dollar index. Uh, and we could see a huge landslide. We could see the U.S. dollar index slide all the way back down to 84, 82, which is a long ways from 92. We're talking a 10 cent potential drop. So, you know, if we do get that U.S. dollar drop, we are going to see commodities really start to firm up. We're probably going to see precious metals uh, explode to the upside in U.S. dollar base uh, terms. And of course, all this kind of bodes really well with what's going on in the, the big picture of the U.S. equities market. Typically, when we see a stock market, a bull market, come to an end or getting in the later stages, which is where we're at with the U.S. dollar uh, with U.S. stocks right now. We've seen the leading stocks kind of already break down and start bear markets like the transportation index. Um, we've seen the Russell 2000 break down. We haven't seen the large caps yet, but we're at that mature ending stage of a bull market. And that's usually when we see commodities start to outperform. This, this happens over and over again. So the dollar breaking down, uh, strengthening money moving into physical assets, commodities seems to be kind of I think what is going to happen and what has happened many times in the past, you go look at these bear markets and bull markets, commodities seem to hold up and rise in value for a few months as the stock market kind of finishes its topping phase and starts to break down. And uh, we're right at that point where if this dollar does break down in the next week, if it confirms down here, we could see precious metals. They've already had a strong run, but we could see them you know, off to the races and go ballistic. Yes, today you were saying that the the dollar had a little bit of a bounce because the Canadian dollar, the euro, the British pound were all down, which usually indicates the U.S. dollar is up. But again, uh, those currencies have had a pretty good run lately. Yeah, well, you know, well, you know, the, the way the chart pattern looks on the U.S. dollar index, if if it can if it stays below support and we see follow through breakdown next week there's going to be a massive collapse in the U.S. dollar index. But if it can hold support into Friday's close, we could see a very strong rally in the U.S. dollar index. It's trading right at the lower end of its range. It's got a a nice kind of falling, somewhat of a bullish pattern. It needs to have a reversal bar and start to break above the ground 95 level for it to really kind of trigger a rally. But it's, it's it's at this tipping point that we're either going to see it break down really hard uh, probably next week, or it's going to have or close firm this week and get above support, and we're going to see a strong bounce. And so it's right at this critical level. And uh, you know, a lot. I think a lot of what's going to happen going forward the next couple of months is going to have a lot to do with the U.S. dollar index, uh, whether it rallies strong or breaks down. And I have a feeling it could end up breaking to the downside. Is is kind of what I'm looking for. Do people pay attention to politics with the U.S. presidential race basically, I think, coming down between Hillary and Trump? 
Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure that plays a big role. I don't follow all the, the fundamentals or politics really at all, but uh, I guarantee there's there's probably some pretty good waiting going on with how much people believe in the U.S. Depending who gets in, it's going to be pretty interesting to see who gets uh, who becomes the next president. And uh, I think you know, depending what goes on, uh, you know, I I think there's a very negative bias towards Trump. Uh, the way he is and how he speaks and how he treats people, but you know he's cleaning he's cleaning up, which is uh, you know he's it's it's amazing the, the what he's doing in terms of performance. I'm not a huge fan of who, who he is myself, but uh, I think a lot of it, uh, whoever gets into uh, becomes the next president, I I think it, a good chunk of it is going to move the dollar because I think a lot of people are very fearful if Trump gets in place. Uh, yeah, I think he could do some things that could really rattle the cages and shake shake things up globally, and could create you know new wars and and things. So, yes, and of course the market likes stability; it doesn't like uncertainty. Exactly. Yeah. What do you think is going to play out with oil right now? Uh, you know, everybody kept telling us that oh, all the storage is full; oil has no choice but to go down. Yet it's been going up uh, a huge gain over the last few months. It has, yeah. It's it's had a big bounce. It's had a big recovery, and I I've got cycle analysis that I follow on it. And if you if you go all the way back to the last, uh, the previous two bounces back in uh, April May last year, and then of course there was another one that was more or less September October last year. We're in that exact same type of cycle, site type of kind of phase and bounce in the market, same time frame. Everything is telling me that crude oil, more or less, is at resistance. I think it's pretty much topped out. I think we're going to see a trade sideways in a, in a fairly choppy, big range sideways here for a while. But overall, I think it's going to really kind of flounder down here. And we've talked about this for a while, that it's probably going to flounder from these, these highs that we've seen in the last week all the way back down to the very lower end of the range, around the 30 $30 per barrel, maybe even less. I think it could flounder down there for a long time still, many, many months before we see a bottom and take off. And if the U.S. dollar does break down, that will definitely support uh, crude oil. But overall, I think crude oil is going to still flounder down here for, for several more months. But it's at the upper end of its range. I think at best it trades sideways up here. And worst case scenario, like I, I think it'll fade back down. I, I, most of the upside here is completely done in crude oil for the next several months, I think. Has it helped that China seems to be topping up its strategic reserves of oil and Chinese drivers have fallen in love with SUVs like American drivers have? Yeah, that probably plays a bit of a role. But uh, in the grand scheme of things, what's going on on the charts, the volume and the price action is – very normal like it's just it's just supply and demand over the commodity and uh you know who knows what really drives it you could you could argue all kinds of different stories and scenarios but in the grand scheme of things everything for crude oil seems to just be playing out as we've been watching the cycle analysis and i think uh, you know we're just trading at the upper end of the range you don't want to be buying crude oil right now i think you could pick it up uh, quite a bit uh, cheaper i think you could be picking it up back down at the uh, 36 32 dollar per barrel level in the next uh, month or three we'll have more with chris vermulen right after the break i'm larry ray president and ceo of american manganese inc listed on the tsx venture ticker symbol amy a m y with proprietary patents in the u.s china and south africa our focus is on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles China recently legislated the responsibility for recycling onto their electric vehicle manufacturers and importers. For more information, please visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. Unbelievable harmony, spectacular performance, the ultimate tribute to the Everly Brothers and Simon and Garfunkel. Bird Dog and the Vintage Electric Band coming to West Vancouver Friday, May 6th at the K-Meek Center. Buy online and save at OnTourTickets.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Chris Vermeulen. Chris, what's the outlook for gold? Does it depend on what happens to the U.S. dollar over the next week? Yeah, I, I think I think gold and silver are going to have a very, very strong relationship to what the U.S. dollar does, especially if the U.S. dollar breaks to the downside. Uh, we've seen the, the dollar start to break down. 
testing kind of support and it has refused to bounce and ever since it started trading at support and every little minor bounce got sold into that I think has got a lot of people fearful that the dollar is going to break down and of course we've seen money pile into gold in the last uh, three uh, three weeks or so. Uh, if the dollar does break down I think we're going to see gold skyrocket. I think I've got about uh, 13 96 an ounce U.S. Uh, for gold over the next uh, month or so, month and a half. I think we could reach up to that level. So uh, the U.S. dollar is definitely going to play a massive role. Uh, but in the grand scheme of things, really, it looks like gold has broken to the upside. And right now, just people continue to pile into gold and accumulate. And we had some pretty big down cycles in gold. And what we're what we've seen in gold is is we're seeing a cycle skew, which means when the cycles are moving down, typically we see gold or price action move down with the cycles, but when you're in a strong trend, instead of the price action moving down with the cycles, price just trades sideways and, is, and, and, is, and holds up really well until those, all those cycles realign and start to move up again. And that's right where we're, we were at about um, a month or so ago. We saw the cycles just start to turn up, and then, of course, we've seen, or it's not a month, no, sorry, not a month ago, about a week ago, those cycles just started to turn up again for another bounce, and we've seen this nice, strong move to new multi-year highs on gold. And I think the same thing is going to happen again. We've got a little bit of a down cycle coming. I think gold is going to flatline here for potentially a couple weeks. Uh, we'll see what the U.S. dollar does here, but overall, gold should continue to flat trade sideways and then rally trade sideways and rally until we get up to this uh, 1396 level, at which point I think it will have more of a significant kind of bull market correction where it tries to buck everyone off the trend, and we'll probably see more significant, significant correction before it continues an up move. Now, that's a $1,000 increase, isn't it? Oh no, it's a hundred dollars. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, it's a hundred hundred dollar difference. But you know, it's pretty interesting because we yesterday we saw really one of the only assets really holding up yesterday was gold. Everything else was pretty much trading lower, stocks and bonds. Everything kind of sold off, and gold was holding up. And that's a really bullish sign, especially when when you look at the cycle skew and what it's been showing over the last pretty much since March. We've seen very positive cycle skew, meaning. When gold should have been moving down with all of its downward bias and trends, it held up really well. And as soon as we get an uptick on any of this, the, the cycles that I have, whether it's a short-term, intermediate-term cycle, gold just moves right back up with those cycles. So it's holding up really well. And that's the same picture I'm seeing actually with bonds. I see bonds and gold kind of trading very similar. Right now, bonds have been trading, having a big down cycle, and they're holding their ground. And we saw the same pattern happen last year between August and pretty much um, January. So pretty much half the year there, we saw a big down cycle in bonds. And all bonds did were trade sideways in a big range. And then as soon as those cycles, the, the longer term cycles bottomed, we saw bonds rocket back up, have a strong rally all the way into uh, uh, February. And then now we're back into this downward cycle where bonds are actually just trading sideways in a big bullish pattern. And I think we've got about another month and a half before we see that, those cycles bottom. And I think we see bonds go and we may see them hit uh, multi-year highs for the TLT. And it'll be fairly significant. And that falls in line, I think, a lot with what gold is doing. I think the safe money is kind of slowly moving back and forth between gold and bonds and uh they're uh, together they're going to rise over the long run when is silver going to close the gap it's traditional gap between gold and silver uh, that's a good question silver silver it's a real explosive kind of investment or play and i i think it'll be a little bit later in the in the game where it plays catch up we saw this um uh, several years ago where gold took off and started to run as the real safe haven play. And then finally the masses said, well, let's, silver's precious metals. They usually move together, pile into silver. And then we saw silver play catch up and outperform. I think the same thing is, is more or less happening again right now because we see gold holding up really well during uncertain choppy days. And we see silver getting sold off fairly substantially, up a percent, down a percent or two. So I think we're going to see a very similar scenario. You don't hear a lot of individual investors, kind of the, the average Joe investor. They 
they're talking about getting into precious metals and gold stocks, but really all they're really thinking about is gold and gold stocks, not really silver. And they they won't really catch on to the silver and realize they can buy more ounces, they can silver moves faster, has more percentage moves. They don't really catch on and learn about that opportunity until a little bit later in the game. And then it seems those investors pile on because you eventually kind of pick up on silver underperforming and usually it plays catch up. It almost always plays catch up. So, you know, if gold outperforms now, you could pull some of the money out of gold, shift it over to silver, and then you get that massive move up in silver uh, in the kind of a, in the later stages of the bull market. Not the second half, but it, once this bull market really gets moving, I think in the next two or three months, uh, silver will kick in uh, later this summer, I think. What about uh, palladium and platinum? Um, those two, you know, they're, they're going to move fairly, fairly similar to what gold. They really don't have a whole lot of interest in them. I've never really followed them too closely. Uh, they're not something that I, I really move on. But uh, they've got some half decent chart patterns. It looks as though they're trying to put in a bottom. Uh, you know, it's they're not something that I really trade. I prefer gold, silver, and miners myself. But they do they do really well. I'm not sure how well. If we do get into a, a big uh, financial problem and crisis, I'm not sure they're going to really outperform. I think so many people are more interested in gold and silver that we see most of the money, like countries, flood to those kind of, I'd say, I almost call gold and silver currencies. They flood to that safe haven currency for their money. And, of course, you really hear about countries accumulating gold. And so that's kind of where I think the real interest will be. Yes, we could see a big you know, these palladium uh, move up with gold and silver, but I, I just don't see it that being that interested of a, of a metal at this point. Well, China's been, of course, buying as much gold as it can lay its hands on. Canada, on the, on the other hand, sold off its gold reserves. Why yeah, the go difference? <laughs> well, uh, yep. someone said, well, perhaps Canada's counting on the fact that it has a lot of gold in the ground and it could just say, uh, you know, give us 10% of the gold you produce as a way of topping up their reserves if they have to. Yeah, they could, you know, they could do that for sure. Obviously, Canada is very gold rich. Problem is it is in the ground, but, um, you know, when gold becomes extremely uh, valuable, double, triple the price from where it is now, you know, who knows? They, you could probably always throw some type of new law in there that they could get, you know, a certain percentage of anything mined out of, you know, Canada's ground and, uh, you know, overall, you get, what Canada sold off their percentage-wise or their dollar value was was really minimal. They didn't, really didn't have any gold reserves. I can't remember what it was, but it was just in the millions. It wasn't hundreds of millions. wasn't, you know, billions. It was fairly small. Yes, unfortunately, what they sold off is they're going to melt down precious coins that are probably worth a whole lot more than their face value. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I've never been a fan of... Uh, Precious metal coins. I'm, to me, I see gold and silver as being just a store of wealth, a currency, not swapping coins and buying. To me, when things get really hot, it's if things get really hot with commodities and the financial markets start to crash and currencies, you know, precious metals become something they barter. Gold and silver are going to be traded to me at, at, at spot value. So you got a coin that you pay $25 for, say, but really in spot weight, if you were to measure it in what it's worth, like the weight, it's probably only worth like 18. All these people are paying these massive premiums on for coins. But when it comes push, push to shove, people are going to just be paying for weight of gold. Who cares if it's got a maple leaf on it? Who cares if it's got a gold eagle or a silver eagle? The picture means nothing. So to me, buying coins and stuff is... Sure, it would be great to maybe have a couple of coins, but I have zero coins. I just have, you know, pure bullion. It's the cheapest way. You're buying it at spot price, more or less. And if all hell breaks loose and stuff hits the fan, you know, you're going to get the best bang for your buck. You didn't pay an extra 20 or 30% for that metal because you wanted, you know, something stamped on it. Is it expensive to store gold and silver? Uh, it's not too expensive. You know, you can either, you can store it yourself or you can store it off site in all kinds of different places. And it, it's really not that much, you know, for a, for a 
pretty decent size holding. You might be paying, you know, anywhere depending where you go, it really varies. You might only pay a hundred or three hundred dollars a year to have it stored and protected, which you know is chump change in the grand scheme of things of you know of what you're holding. So it's it's nothing significant. It's it's worth having it stored for you. I don't believe in, in holding your own metals. I think you have it stored, secured, insured. Uh, you know, it just makes sense all around. And, you know, you pay for security. There's, that's just what it is. You, you know, if you want to be secure and remove kind of threats and risks, you pay a little bit more or you don't make as much in the end, but at least you're somewhat protected. Yes, critics of gold say, well, if you store it, you're paying for that storage. You don't make interest on it. But if you have a regular bank account and you put money in, people are charging you thirteen, twenty six dollars a month for looking after your money. So you still pay for the storage of your money and the security of it, don't you? Whether yeah, it's totally. gold or cash. Yeah. yeah. Well yeah, when you weigh it all out, it's you know, I, I think precious metals is a great way to store to store money and have an insurance plan in case something goes wrong or a bank goes out of business, especially in America. I would you know, I hate to have my money in an American bank. The fact that they can go bankrupt and and there's like 1,700 different banks in the United States scares me. Like if they, anyone could just go under at any time and vanish. You know, Canada, we're a lot more, we've only got the big five banks, so it's a lot more stable, a lot more secure. I'm not quite as worried about, uh, you know, a small town bank that's only in one town. But uh, I would definitely, you know, have precious metals. If I was American, I'd probably have more precious metals than I have now, and I'd have them stored off-site in a secured uh, vault. Chris, thanks a lot for chatting with us. Hey, thanks for having me on the show, Jim. My guest has been Chris Vermeulen. His website, thegoldenoilguy.com. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio. Find us on Twitter at TalkDigitalNet. Our popular YouTube channel is Talk Digital Network. Comments or questions for the show can be emailed to info at HowStreet.com. I'm Jim Goddard. Thanks for listening. Comments made on HowStreet.com Radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. HowStreet.com Radio is a production of HowStreet Media Incorporated.